Hey folks, I'm Radney Foster, and this is Real Life, Real Music. Real Life, Real Music Radio, with your host, Kyle Hutton. Well, hello, Radney. Hey, man. How are you doing? I'm good. So you got the memo? Oh, yeah, Black Pearl Snap. That was <laughs> Who else got it? Anybody else get the memo? Black Pearl Snap? Okay. Man, thank you so much for uh, taking time out of your schedule. Uh, and and I, I want our audience, because we will be the first ones, okay? Radney has not had a public appearance since Saturday night. I haven't. No. And Saturday night, Radney was inducted into the Texas Songwriters Hall of Fame. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I'm still trying to wrap my head around that, actually. Well, we, we as your fans already have our, 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 our uh, heads wrapped around that. And I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions and okay. kind of lead you all over the place tonight. But, but since, you know, since you're the guest, I'm going to let you pick the first song. And pick wisely because I'm going to ask you about all the rest of them. So you <laughs> pick one you want to start us with tonight. I'm going to have to stand up to sing this one because and I'll, uh, I'll explain why. Because um, it's got the freaking highest notes in my range. On this. Well, it's always smart to start with those. Well, well, here's actually, it means you have to warm up backstage. Um, so uh, 30 years ago, this thing came out and, and, uh, I got a call from my manager and they said that they wanted me to, uh, you know, debut this song on the Grand Ole Opry. And I was thrilled and excited and nervous and everything else. My mom and dad flew all the way from Del Rio up to Nashville, you know, drove and flew and drove and flew, you know, all the, you know, you can't just get from Del Rio to Nashville. <laughs> well, it doesn't really work that way. But uh, so uh, I'm getting ready to go on. My band is behind me. and. You know, we've been on tour. This thing is screaming up the charts, and and uh, the album's going to come out in two weeks. And uh, the announcer says all these really nice things about my music and my songwriting. And he says, "Ladies and gentlemen, please make welcome Randy Forrester." <laughs> I'm having a panic. This is back when it was on live television. Okay, it was actually on TV on the Nashville Network on Saturday nights. I'm having a panic attack on live television. So. And so I, don't, I have no idea what to do, but I know that in two weeks, I would really like for them not to buy Randy Forrester's record, <laughs> to really buy mine. And so uh, this is what I did. And when I got off stage, the guys in the band said, boss, that was so cool. We should open every single show that way. So I have for the last 30 years. <laughs> My name is Radney Foster, and I'm from Del Rio, Texas. See you with him 
and fall apart again remembering when I was the only man you needed we said forever we'd be together he came between us and now forever lies in pieces so just Thank you so much wow that was great randy <laughs> <laughs> sorry i had to do that uh okay so one of the things first off i mean it, you know we all we all just cheered uh uh which is a reflection of how we feel but i, I just want to tell you as a, a friend and a mentor and a hero of mine i think your induction into the Texas Songwriters Hall of Fame is well deserved, Thank and I you. feel like if uh, if there was an award, yeah, I, f I feel like if there was an award for uh, in a mentor category for somebody that has has mentored people to take the next step in their music career uh, that you would have, you would be in that Hall of Fame oh, too, and Thank and. You. What I love about it is, you know, your name has been mentioned on this state. We've done over 300 shows, okay? Mm -hmm. So I don't care if it was Pat Green or Randy Rogers or William Beckman or yeah, I could go down a list of people, Zane Williams, that have listed you uh, as, a, as a major influence in their career. And uh, that, that, that is a huge thing. And so... Going back to the thing that made those people mm -hmm. connect to you before they knew you are those songs. They're the songs yeah. that you've been writing. And I want to ask you about one because I know we're here to commemorate the 30th anniversary of Del Rio, Texas, 1959. Just Call Me Lonesome was one of the songs on that record. Mm -hmm. But one of the songs that, that was on there as well that caught my attention um, as, as a quintessential country music song because it's one of those ones that reaches down in and I think grabs you by the heart um, and, and that's a song called Easier Said Than Done um, well, it's my you. favorite song on that record oh wow thank you and and I, I wonder if you would uh, just tell us a little bit about the writing of that song and, sure. and kind of where that came I, oh, from I do want to say something about mentoring and, and that is uh, and this goes out this is for anybody who's in any creative position I'd um, I had moved to Nashville and I was, you know, you know, I had been there a couple of years and, and really with not hardly anything going on. And, um, there was a guy who was a very famous songwriter named Randy Goodrum and Randy wrote, uh, you needed me for Ann Murray. He wrote, somebody's going to give you a lesson and leave and somebody's going to give you back what you've been given. And I hope that I'm around. He, he wrote, uh, I'm not talking about moving in, and I don't want to change. There was one point in, like, I think 1978 uh, or 9, I forget which, but of the top 10 songs on the pop charts, he wrote five of them. <laughs> oh, you know, wow. it's just, like, crazy. And, yeah. and a ton of country hits, too, and stuff. And so, you know, this guy has taken me under his wing, and I'm trading babysitting his kids for for him helping me like on an off afternoon to do some acoustic demos and try to get my songs to publishers wow and you know 
and I'm looking at all the gold records and stuff, and, and he's taken way too long to, uh, much of his time to try to fool with me. And, and I just, I was like, Randy, you know, you can afford a babysitter, man. <laughs> yeah, why are you doing this? And he said, because somebody did it for me. Mm. And he said, someday you're going to be a big star. And I was like, man, I, you know, <laughs> I hope so, but man. And he said, but you need to remember this moment. Mm. He said, because you're going to need to give it back the same way. Well, thank you for remembering and, that. And, and, and I always have. And, yeah. and, but it really was true. So anybody who's out there is in the creative arts, pay it forward. Yeah. You know, give it down. Yeah. So. Okay, easier said than done. Man, it is a heartbreak country song, so give us a little bit about where it came from. You know, uh, it's really, um, it's about the betrayal of trust, full stop. And, uh, and my, you know, my ex-wife and I were in, in a bumpy spot, and I was... And I had lied to her about something that was pretty insignificant, but it really hit her and hurt her. And I realized how, you know, that, you know, sort of regaining any sense of trust about it was, you know, going to require time and, and, and her forgiveness and me being a patient guy. And, uh, um, and then, of course, I thought, you know, that might make a good song. And, uh, and then it's like, but, you know, lying about whether you'd change the oil in the car is probably not going to get it as a subject matter. So maybe I better take this to its nth degree, you know. Yeah. And, uh, so I don't, not that that was what it was like. I don't remember what it was. It was something, but it was something seemingly insignificant, you know. It's like, and uh, so uh, um, I wrote this song and it became a, a hit single on, off of the record. And, and for many people, it, it it is their favorite song. Yeah. You put together all the pieces of the puzzle So one more light be a waste of my breath It's too late now for me to start being truthful no amount of regret can win back your love. You see, it's easier said than done. The words cater even all the trust my life's killed. Resurrect some. It's already gone You see you can't make I love you Mean what it used to It's easier said than done You got every right, girl, to hate me For betraying any real love we've known Only a fool could break something so sacred Begging forgiveness won't right the wrong you see, it's easier said than done. And words can't reveal all the trust my life's killed. Resurrect some old feeling that's already. See, you can't make I love you mean what it used to. It's easier said than done. You 
See, you can't make I love you mean what it used to. It's easier said than done. You know, uh, I, I, I first met Radney, I was probably the opener to the opener to the opener on a festival that Radney played, and, and uh, first time I ever met him, he was getting his guitar out of the back of his rental vehicle, and I went over and, you know, fanned all over him, and he was probably like, oh my gosh, get this guy out of here. But then we first really worked together the first time Radney did Real Life Real Music, and after that... We, we got to know each other, and, and uh, I'd throw songs Radney's way, and he'd listen to them and say things like, don't ever play that song again. And, <laughs> no, actually, he never said that. But he, he was very gratuitous with his time and his, and his uh, uh, knowledge. And, and then at, at one point, we started writing songs together. And uh, I remember one time I was heading up to Nashville, and I said, uh, Tara, you know, I'll, I'll see you in a few days. I'm going up. And, and uh, she knew I had writing appointments with Radney. And she said, well, where are you going to write? And I said, I don't know, but Radney really knows how to write two types of songs really well. So it's either going to be sad or sexy. <laughs> True. He's got the two S's down. So I have to ask you, I have to ask you, um, you know, where you come up with some of the lines that you come up with. I mean, your love is like religion across in Mexico. Like, what? Where is it? Like, do you just sit around going, what's going to make the girls have goosebumps? You know, or what? How, how do you do that? I, I have no earthly idea. I think backwards. I think about everything. And, and, I, and that song uh, I wrote with Daryl Brown, who produced uh, that record from See What You Want to See, that... Uh, and there's actually a, a, re, um, a re-recording of it on my latest record, um, For You to See the Stars, because yeah. uh, I found a short story in it, and that, well, we'll talk about that later. But, yeah. uh, you know, I, and as a matter of fact, that line is a good example. You know, I wanted, I was really influenced by mariachi music and by um, all the Mexican folk music that I heard coming across the river when I was growing up. And, uh, and... You know, so, and, and my co-writer, um, Daryl, had uh, been raised in Arizona, and he okay. was influenced by that stuff, too, you yeah. know, and so I, was, I walked in, and uh, it was pouring <laughs> at his house, and he had, a, he had this old 1930s house and a front porch, but I mean, I'd forgotten my raincoat completely, and I'm trying to get a guitar and, like, you know, a, a briefcase or satchel or something, and... You know, I got and this pouring water, you know, and I got, I got my, my jean jacket over my head. And I'm just trying to get, without being completely soaked, yeah. you know, into his house. And it was a Sunday afternoon. And I said, I went, whenever it's raining on Sunday. And I'm laughing and <laughs> shaking it off. And he goes, no, that's what we're writing. And there I was go. like, well. There you go. And, then I, and I said, well, I, I thought we might write something sort of, you know, with some of those, like, you know, misused minor chords that we, you know, that you use, you can use in 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 Latin music and in Mexican, you know, folk music in particular, and was kind of thinking about that. And he's like, "Oh, we can still do that." And I'm like, "Okay." So we just start batting that stuff around, and and at the end of it, I mean, I, I at the end of that afternoon, we knew we had a good song, and I thought, you know, nobody is ever going to cut this but me. Because the second verse is about God, sex, Mexico, rain, and the desert, and none, and not in any any logical order whatsoever, <laughs> you know. And so, and I was wrong, you know. So that record comes out, and and this song was a hit here at home in Texas for me, and nowhere else in the world. And uh, and so I'm at a charity gig in Nashville, and Keith Urban. His first record had just come out and blowing up, you know, just absolutely out of the gate, you know, and uh, and he comes, he's sitting in the front row, 
And, uh, and I was like, oh, there's that, that boy can play a guitar real good, and he can sing real good, and he writes real good songs, too, you know? And, uh, and I was like, you want to get up and do it? And, no, okay, all right. So, uh, so it came my turn to uh, uh, play something, and I played this song. And he came up to me after and he said, that's my favorite song off of your latest record. And he said, and I love that record. It's an absolute game changer for me. And he said, and I'm going to cut that song when we go in the studio to make my second album. I'm like, and in my head, I'm going, Capitol Records is never going to let you cut that song. <laughs> <laughs> and, but they did, and it became a real big hit for him, too. So. But this is the West Texas version right here. So. It ticks just like a Timex Never lets up on you Who said life was easy The job is never through It'll run us till we're ragged It'll harden our hearts Love could use a day of rest Before we both start falling apart Pray that it's raining on Like the incense of a prayer nailed to the door. I surrender is much sweeter when we both let go. Let the water wash our bodies clean and love wash our souls. Never is raining on sun. song did all right for you. Yeah, it did. It did, it did real good. <laughs> I've had breakfast in the kitchen that song bought. Yeah, pretty much. Exactly. <laughs> I love that story. He calls his kitchen the Keith Urban Memorial Kitchen. <laughs> good pancakes there. <laughs> good pancakes. Man. All right, so Radney, I need you to do something for me before I forget. Okay. Um, we need a radio. We need a liner. 
sure. for the radio program. This is where you guys get to participate as well, okay? Because you're going to say, this is Radney Foster, and this is real life, real music. Okay. And then I need you guys to go absolutely nuts, okay, for about four minutes, and then I'm going to cut you off. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. When I go like this, we've got enough. Hey, folks, I'm Radney Foster, and this is Real Life, Real Music. Some of y'all must be from Del Rio, Texas. Wow. Okay, so Del Rio, Texas, growing up in Del Rio, Texas, I mean, yeah. like, okay, so now we got you, we got William Beckman, we got some folks coming out of Del Rio, but has that always been like this mecca for songwriting or doubt it? You know, you? I, don't, I don't really know. Uh, you know, I asked, I asked Guy Clark one time, because he was a lawyer's son from Marathon, you know, and I'm from a lawyer's son from Del Rio, and I said, what is it about lawyer's kids in, you know, far west Texas, southwest Texas, you know, uh, Come, turn out to be songwriters. She says there's not a damn thing to do out there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I, you know, there have always been really good musicians out of Del Rio, and one was my mentor in a big way. Blondie called it on was um, was Ray Price's piano player and band leader for decades. Really? Okay. Yeah. And actually, when I first wanted to learn how to stretch out and play something besides cowboy chords. Um, I wanted to learn how to play George Benson's This Masquerade because it was all over the radio and I thought that was such a cool song. And, uh, and my dad said, you know, who, my dad played guitar and sang, but he was not a very good guitar player. And, and he said, well, I don't know much about uh, anything, but I know that's jazz and I know who can teach you jazz in this town. Mm. And he said, Blondie can. I said, the piano player? And he said, yeah. So I rode my bicycle. They owned a restaurant called Memos. And I, uh, it's great. And, uh, um, and his wife, his widow, is uh, still alive, still runs it, and it's awesome. Um, wow. So I rode my bike with my guitar in, in a you know, gig bag on my back down to their restaurant, and he sat around the piano, and he had like a, a Mel Bay chord book about that thick, you know, with every variation there was on the planet mm. for it. And we sat there, and I learned how to walk the bass line all the way down and then all the way back up again as the song progressed, the same way it did on the record. And, and he wrote all the chords out on paper for me and you know, all that kind of stuff. And, um, and at the end of the day, I'd not only made a mentor, I'd made a friend because mm. you know, that's the first place that you know, when you're a kid, he'd be, hey, man, you sing pretty good. You want to sit in and play a, sing a song one night? Because they used to have jam bands. Uh, they used to jam on Tuesday nights when they were off the road with uh, Ray. And so, I mean, there's a long history of a bunch of great musicians coming out of there. Yeah, yeah. Well, and you know, even even when you tell stories, man, it may, it, uh, my mind goes visual, you know, and I feel like I'm being taken away to a place. And I think that's another uh, kind of signature thing about your songwriting that I love, especially your story songs. And I wanted to ask you about one, since again, we're, we're here to celebrate the 30th anniversary of Del Rio, Texas, 1959. I wanted to ask you about a song called Went for a Ride. I've heard that one covered by a lot of other artists. Oh, wow, cool. Yeah. Went for a Ride is uh, one of the coolest story songs. Tell us a little well, bit about I, that one. It actually got inspired because I'm, I'm a a history nut and a cowboy history nut in particular. And um, I sat down to write with um, a, then a young African-American woman who had gone to Harvard and she had moved to Nashville because, uh, I think she was an English literature major and she had moved to Nashville because she wanted to be a country songwriter. And I'm trying to figure out what in the world do I have in common with this woman because she's from the East Coast, you know, uh, and and I know nothing about you know Harvard or anything like that and 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 so uh, other than I played the bars across the street from it you know <laughs> and so um, the uh, and we started talking about things that we were interested in and and I mentioned that you know the Fort Clark which was 29 miles away from Del Rio was a, a Buffalo Soldiers 10th Cavalry. Um, base back in the day and that you know and she said yes and there's a very famous uh you know trick rider and shooter 
who took the name, the stage name, Dead Eye Dick from Deadwood, South Dakota, whose mm. real name was Nat Love. And I was like, wow, how do you know? And so we had this long discussion and I said, well, we could write about that, you know? And so, you know, I, I think the, the final thing that she, I remember trying to, you know, we we're trying to figure out, you know, how we, we actually had, because she was such a lyricist, you know, and that was really where she was coming from. We had, you know, lots of lyric ideas and things like that before we ever put any music to it at all. And, and she said, well, you know, is it third person and you talk about him or is it, is it him singing the song? You know, are you just some narrator? I said, no, you're one of his running buddies. And that's when it all came together. Mm. And, uh, um, and that's, and we, and the first verse fell out right at that point. So it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful song. He was black as the sky on a moonless night. Real good with the horses, he never reined them too tight. And he rode with the best, hell, he rode with me. And they got it all wrong in that book of history. It wasn't cowboys and ponies, it was horses and men. It wasn't schoolboys and ladies, it was cap towns and sand and there was blood on the leather and tears in her eyes we swore at the devil and then went for a ride we told some tales he told them best Real life can always use a good stretch But that don't change the things we did Cause the truest thing was a life that we lived It wasn't cowboys and ponies, it was horses and men It wasn't schoolboys and ladies, it was Cow towns and sin, and there was blood on the leather and tears in her eyes. And we swore at the devil and I went for a ride. Bitter as the night, sweet Jesus wept. She stole my heart, age stole the fire, and they stole my prayer and they strung all that wire. It wasn't cowboys and ponies, it was horses and men. It wasn't schoolboys and ladies, it was. Cow towns and sand, and there was blood on the leather, and tears in her eyes. And we swore at the devil, and then I went for a ride. Loud we swore at the devil, and then I went for a ride.
great song, man. Thank you so much. Yeah. Huh. That's a great song. You know, uh, one of the other things, Radney, too, I think that probably, uh, as I've followed your music through your career, um, I, I love that there are little, like, little evidences of kind of where your mind's at and, and where your heart's at, um, sprinkled throughout your songs, you know? Like, I catch these little liturgical elements or <laughs> spiritual references that, that show up. Great Episcopalian. Yeah, there you go. It says show up, show up in the songs you write. And, uh, and, and you and I have had, you know, now we've had the opportunity to have a few glasses of wine and have some very deep, you know, oh, yeah. uh, I'm sure very theologically correct spiritual conversations. <laughs> but or theologically I, incorrect. One yeah, or the other. one of the two. But but I just I, I love that you uh, that that you sing about what's true for you and your life and what you believe in. And uh, I, I want to ask you about a song that's one of my favorites um, that you put on a special. Uh, concept record that you did and it's actually the title cut of uh, really a faith based record that you did yeah. called Revival I yeah. wonder if you'd tell us about that song and sure play for us. Uh, I was um, I had just gone through sort of uh, several upheavals one of which was I was, um, I just lost my dad and I was turning 50 and you know a lot of big things were happening in my life and my um my old my oldest son was going to be coming back home from having lived in France for 13 years at the age of 18, and uh, so it was just a lot of joy and a lot of sorrow and a lot of transitions. And I just thought, I don't know if it's going to be strictly what you would call a gospel record, but I'm going to make a gospel record, you know. And um, and I knew I wanted that particular thought process and I wanted that I wanted to be feel comfortable not trying to hide you know that every song had something that was attached to faith in it yeah and, and uh and so a revival uh, a little revival which is the actual title um was written by myself and Daryl Brown again um and uh my good friend Jay Clementi and it had three very different guys from three very different backgrounds and upbringings, and it was, um, you know, during the 2008 elections cycle, and and so we we were just all talking, you know, and and I said something about well, what does a country really need? And Daryl, having grown up, you know, in church starts rattling these big gospel chords. We need revival, you know? And I said, I said, yeah, we do. And that's what we're going to write. And, uh, and so we started with all kinds of images about things that were real to us, that we knew about. Um, and mine was, uh, you know, this really the story of my pastor, uh, rector, um, who is, uh, Becca Stevens, and she started uh, something called Magdalene House for women who've been trafficked, and also started a social enterprise called Thistle Farms. Uh, she's because she said I could, you know, I could, I could help them get sober. I could help them get their um, their lives back together. I could help them get custody of their children back, mm. but I couldn't get rid of their arrest record. And and so she thought, well, if I can get them employment skills and that they've been employed you know while they're living in this halfway house um, and so and she one of the interesting things you know she, Episcopal, Episcopal priests wear a collar a little bit different than a Catholic collar but similar and uh, and the only time she's ever worn a collar was when she was taking coffee to the women who were the working streets on 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 Dickerson Road hmm. she wanted it to be known who she was and uh, and so she's in the song. Look at that woman uh, on the corner. She's handing out coffee in the word. She's listening to the work and the girls, the ones that never get heard. So I'm gonna get emotional. <laughs> <laughs> Are y'all doing okay out there tonight? Everybody good? All right. 
if you if if you if you have not experienced uh, the record called Revival by Radney Foster, you need to you need to stream it uh, because it it is full of songs that will touch your heart. I can't sit this. I can't sing this one sitting down. So. Look at that boy in the river, soaking wet with fate. Look at that girl on the courthouse steps, saying things gotta change. There's that woman on the corner. She's handing out coffee in the word She's listening to the working girls The ones that never get hurt Every time I think I'm lost in This world nothing but luck God always sends someone down something to see Hey, that kid with his guitar in the subway He might change the world someday If it's Jerusalem Or in Tiananmen Square Didn't it all get started Someone stood up Giving you my heart Hallelujah A little revival Amen to love Deep in my soul A little revival stand here do it do it okay so let, let's go I, I want to take you back to uh, Del Rio Texas 1959 and ask you about another one of my favorite songs on that record called Hammer and Nails <laughs> 
play that one for us. Oh, yeah. I, uh, I had, uh, I had the record. What I thought was finished. <laughs> but I had an, uh, the head of the label was my A&R guy. And, uh, and he's really, it was a soulful record producer and great record guy and a great songwriter. He wrote a ton of Alabama hits and stuff. And, um, and he just said, you know, the, uh, he said, you know, you, you're not going in till you have what they call a first single for a baby act. A first single for somebody nobody's ever heard of. Now, that, and he's like, now they're going to have heard of you a little bit because of Foster and Lloyd. But, you know, they might not put two and two together and figure out that you were the guy from that band. And, and so it's got, we just got to treat it like that's the thing. And I said, okay. And he said, so... I've got eight songs, or nine, you know, and he's like, when you get that last song written, and uh, then, uh, you know, then we can go. And so every week, I would come in with three, maybe four songs, and play them for him live in front of his desk. You know, not, not recorded, not nothing, just actually, just there you go. Yeah. And, uh, and he'd be like, nope, you're not ready. <laughs> and uh, it's like, nope, doesn't beat any of the things. That, and I did this for like six weeks or maybe two months. And so I was really getting frustrated. And, uh, and every now and then he goes, well, that might bump this one off, but you don't have that first single. And, uh, and so I came in and I played him uh, three songs. And Hammer and Nails was one of them. And he goes, I think that bumps that other song off the record, but you still don't have a first single. And I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> and so he said, what else you got going on? I said, he said, I said well, I wrote this, uh, I wrote this you know, Buck Owen shuffle with my friend George Dukas, and I played him Just Call Me Lonesome, and he stood on his desk and said, that's it. <laughs> and uh, so, um, but I've already played that one. So... Um, <laughs> So I'm going to do Hammer and Nails, which was the other song that happened. That, that, so go. that day, it's like we decided that, you know, that this was going on the record. And, and, uh, um, and it is the one, it's the one positive song on the record. <laughs> so there's none of the other songs are positive songs. So there. Better build your house on a rock or watch it crumble and feel. Better build your love with a hammer and nails. I see it in the darkness as if it was broad daylight. I feel it down inside my soul when I hold you tight. It takes much more than passion. Gotta raise it up with a hammer and nails. Hammer and nails, we're gonna build this love. Baby, oh, flesh and blood. Lay it out so straight and true. Build our love with a hammer and nail. Build one room for laughter. You build one room for tears. This ain't no game, no house of cards. It's gonna take us years. A vow that's only spoken it comes to no avail. Put them in your hands A hammer and nails A hammer and nails We're gonna build this love Baby, oh Flesh and blood Lay that firm foundation down To the last detail 
to build our love with a hammer and nails. stage tonight that's played the Grand Ole Opry, so you're going to have to grade me on this. Um, it's time for my Porter Wagner moment where I thank, where I thank my sponsors. And uh, I told you guys I was going to tell you how we got to do this show for the last 15 years and collect... Uh, well, just the stories and the songs and the hearts like we're doing tonight, we couldn't do it without the help of our corporate sponsors. First off, sponsoring our radio program, our video podcast, and uh, the live show that you're here at tonight. My friends, for the last few years, uh, have been sponsoring this show, and uh, man, they're vital in any real estate transaction that you do. They're kind of behind the scenes, but uh, you've never met a better group of people. My friends at Chicago Tide. Houston. Y'all give them a big round of applause. Thank you guys for everything you do to make nights like tonight happen. And then my friends from Caldwell Communities, and I want to tell you about two things. First off, it is a neighborhood just north of here called Chambers Creek in Willis. It is a 55 and better community. <laughs> And here's what I'm going to tell you. Whether it is Chambers Creek up north or the Highlands down south, what I really appreciate about Caldwell Communities and their team is the attention that they pay to detail in their communities uh, through the amenities and those sort of things, but also a, a real care about the people in the community and a focus on the lifestyle. So if you're looking for a place uh, to live, either north of here or south of here, be sure and check out Chambers Creek and the Highlands and Caldwell Communities. Thank you guys for everything you do to help us make this show possible. We appreciate you. And last but not least, you remember the old commercial where the guy says, and not only am I the president of the hair club for men, but I'm a client, okay? Uh, I couldn't say that until about, I guess, seven months ago. They had just been sponsors for our show for about three years because they love music. And just like our other sponsors, they believe in putting their money back into the community where they make their living. Uh, and that's my friends over at the Griffin Realty Group. Thank you for helping me get top dollar for my home. And if you want to know what your house is worth or you're looking for a place or you need a rental property or you know third vacation home or whatever you need griffin realty group right here joel christie thank you guys for helping us make tonight possible okay so I, i'm gonna stay on uh del rio texas 1959 and i'm gonna ask you about uh what arguably has has been one of the biggest hits of your career and it's another one of those, uh, well, you know, fighting songs. You like, <laughs> guess you boys from Del Rio like to fight, but it's another fighting song. But boy, it's got some good, important truths to it. And if you've been in a relationship for more than five minutes, you need to listen to this song. You know which one I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. So I wrote this song with Kim Ritchie, who's a, just a phenomenal, if you don't know her music, go get it. Go, go stream it immediately. She's really a phenomenal songwriter. And um, we had an appointment to write on a spring morning about 10 o'clock. And I drove over to her house and 
And she said, you know, I walked in, she poured me a cup of coffee and said, like, how you doing? What's up? What's going on? You know, I said, oh, man, my wife and I had a big fight last night. It was awful. <laughs> she goes, ugh, it's the worst. My, uh, my boyfriend and I had a huge fight last night. And she said, and nobody wins that stuff, only she didn't say stuff. And I said, well, that's what we ought to write. So we did. And at the, I mean, I thought we, we knew we had a good song, but I don't think we knew we had a number one song on our hands. And, uh, so, and, and the nice part has been, I think because it really is about such a relatable thing that really, you know, you know, it, it, it's like, Nobody wins that stuff. <laughs> and and uh, um, I think that's one of the reasons it's had the longevity that it's had, that it's yeah. still around and still getting played on the radio, which is sort of amazing. You know, so. You said this ain't over yet. I've said things that I'll regret. Won't be easy to forget. Scars take time to heal Before another better word gets loose I was hoping we could call a truce Cause nobody wins, we both lose Hearts get broken and love gets bruised When we like that same old views Again and again Randy, let's take a let's take a minute. I want to talk about something that. Uh, uh, well, first off, it, it it's a huge honor to me. You know, I I uh, 
I really got turned back on to country music. You know, I, li- I grew up listening to Willie and Waylon and Johnny Cash and uh, man, some of my earliest memories of driving around with my dad uh, on Saturdays listening to Don Williams, you know, on the bench seat of his pickup truck. And uh, man, one of the, a- a- after I took a departure into the the hair bands of the 80s to get away from my father's country. Uh, the way I found my way back to country music was through a band I discovered called Foster and Lloyd. Foster and Lloyd, uh, Radney Foster and Bill Lloyd. And uh, man, you guys had some great records. And uh, that, that really brought me back to uh, my roots of, of country music. And when I was listening to those old Foster and Lloyd records, if you would have ever told me that I'd be the next guy to record a duo project with Radney Foster, I would have never believed you in a, in a million years. But, but we did. Oh, but we did. And, and uh, just very quickly, a quick synopsis of it. My wife Tara and I, about probably nine years ago now, we decided that uh, I was adopted when I was six weeks old through the Pelton Children's Center here in Houston. And I've been given a lot of chances in my life that a lot of kids don't get. Um, The fact that I'm sitting here with you tonight is just evidence of that. And I I don't take that, don't take that lightly. And about nine years ago, my wife and I really felt uh, like God was calling us to try to help out some kids in the area that that didn't have a safe place to stay. And so we got uh, certified for foster care. And during the beginning stages of that, we, we had about seven kids come through the house. And as you can imagine, as a songwriter, my notepad started filling up with ideas related to the emotions of uh, what these kids were going through, what we were going through, what the birth parents were going through. And one day I got this idea. I'm like, man, I got all these song ideas. And my biggest songwriting mentor is Radney Foster. And I sent him a text and I said, hey, Radney, if it's not too cheesy that your last name is Foster, <laughs> what if we did a project to raise awareness for foster kids in the state of Texas? And he's like, dude, I'm in, I'm in. He said, I'm in, because that was a number one he had with Keith Urban. And he reminds me of that every time he can. No, I'm just kidding, I'm kidding. Uh, no, Radney said I'm in because that's, that's how he is. And, and so... Uh, he's got two siblings that were adopted, so his family life had been shaped by that. And so I flew to Nashville, Tennessee, um, and we had about 12 hours between the two of us, uh, half day one day and maybe a full day the next day before I had to fly back um, to Houston. And, uh, well, I'll let you tell a little of the story. I showed up on your doorstep with a pocket full of song ideas. He had all these ideas, and... uh... And you know, usually it takes it usually takes us a day, sometimes even two, to finish the song. Like we'll get a you know we'll get a song three quarters of the way there, and you know he's like, all right, well we'll finish this one on the phone over the phone, you know, in a couple weeks or something. And, but on in those twelve hours, we wrote four songs, and uh, and it was like they were just handed down to us. You know, it just really was. And uh, that I think the fact that he had taken such powerful notes, and uh, and this song in particular that I think is the one you want me to do. Yeah, um, let's play it. Is, uh, you know, he told me the title, and he, and he basically told me that, you know, he knew this was their, I think their first foster child, and it we, was an the, infant. Yeah, the first girl that came through our house, first little girl, we had her for, we had her for two months, and she was uh, maybe four weeks old when we got her, and we had her for two months, and as you can imagine, we got... We, we got pretty attached, and, and uh, well, foster care did what it was supposed to do. It, it, it gave the mom time to get her act together. She got clean, and we were kind of that temporary place uh, for her baby to have a safe place to stay um, while she got things together. And, and uh, CPS called us and said, hey, uh, we, we got to come pick the baby up. And... Uh, I woke up at about five in the morning, the morning they were going to pick her up, and I went to the refrigerator, and Tara, my wife, had uh, put together all the bottles that we would feed her before she left to go back um, that day. And I 
opened the refrigerator door and I looked in and I thought, three more bottles and she's gone. And that so was, he turns, he tells me this story and I'm doing exactly, I'm going, ugh, you know, <laughs> just like you guys are all going, uh, and I said, can we make this like a Merle Haggard drinking song? <laughs> and he's like, sure. There was anything I could do to make her stay I'd put down this bottle and I'd find a better way But she's packed up and on to someone new And picking up the pieces is all that's left to do and I've always known she's leaving from the very start And I knew I'd give her everything And I knew she'd break my heart It might be the best for her, but it feels so wrong Three more bottles and she's gone Funny how the fridge is keeping time Counting down these moments Just waiting on goodbye I'd make the next round last forever if I could And try to talk her into staying If I thought it'd do me any good but I've always known she's leaving from the very start And I knew I'd give her everything And I knew she'd break my heart It might be the best for her, but it feels so wrong Two more bottles and she's gone As I hold her in my arms And look into her eyes Her bottle's half empty Yet we're running out of time And as I hear her new folks pull into the drive Well I've always known she's leaving From the very start and I knew I'd give her everything And I knew she'd break my heart It might be the best for her But it feels so wrong One more bottle and she's gone How could something start so right and end so wrong? She's finishing this bottle and she's gone. We got to play. We played that song at an event where uh, the First Lady of Texas, Cecilia Abbott, and uh, at the time, the, the head of the Department of uh, Family Protective Services, Hank Whitman, was there. And Hank Whitman came up to us in front of Miss Abbott after the show, and he said, Kyle, that Three More Bottle song that y'all sang, that's the worst foster recruiting song ever <laughs> written 
in history. Thanks for that one. <laughs> Sad country songs. Yeah, man. All right, so we got to bring things back up, Beat Radney. And uh, I, I want to ask you if, uh, if, if I can be Pat Green. Sure. And let's do a version of... Uh, well, you got to tell the story because half the audience is from Del Rio, Texas tonight. And uh, okay. you, you got to tell the story about your, uh, your daddy. Oh, yeah. Before we do this. So uh, I'm 20 years old and I'm, uh, I'm supposed to be back at school, uh, heading back to college. I finished my junior year and, and uh, I was about to start my senior year. And I woke my mother and daddy up in the middle of the night. At about two in the morning, I said, Mama, Daddy, I got something that's really heavy on my heart, and I need to talk to you about it. And uh, I said, I think God wants me to drop out of college so I can be a singer and a songwriter. <laughs> and my dad sat bolt upright in bed and wiped the sleep out of his eyes and, and made the longest sigh I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> and he said, Son, I've known God a long, long time. And I don't believe he wants any son of mine to drop out of college to be a singer and a songwriter. You heard wrong. <laughs> and uh, so we, they cut a deal. I don't know who with, but they cut a deal. And so uh, three days later, I was loading my Volkswagen full of everything that I owned, you know, to seek my fame and fortune in Nashville. And uh, I had learned a new, a new word called sabbatical. And uh, um, so I... Uh, I'm loading up the car, and, and uh, my mom's one of her best friends who she taught school with, who was a rancher's daughter like my mom was, uh, had uh, made me a banana bread for the trip. And she said, as she gave it to me, she said, Radney, you got you to gotta watch out for that music business. It's just like rodeo, and it'll get in your blood, and you can't get it out. You know? I said, well, I'll be careful, Sarah. You know? But it kind of bugged me, and, and I got 90 miles of the 1,200 I had to travel. And I pulled the car over in Sabinal, Texas, and I wrote down the first verse to this song. And when I got through, you know, I didn't know much. I was 20, and I couldn't write my way out of a wet paper bag. But I knew that that was a good verse. And, and I didn't know what else to do with it. And it haunted me for seven more years. It went from cheap apartment to cheap apartment. It went back to college with me. It went to... It, it went to... to you know, notepad to notepad, cassette idea to cassette idea. And uh, finally, before the first Foster and Lloyd record, I finally finished it because I figured out that it was about something much bigger than just riding rodeo. It was really about chasing a dream with every single thing that you are and being a dreamer and dreaming hard enough and working hard enough to make that kind of thing come true. It became a hit for Foster and Lloyd and, uh, in 1987. And then many years later, I was making my first... Um, independent record where I owned the masters and I called up Pat Green I said hey man you want to sing Bill Lloyd's parts on uh, on Texas in 1880 because I want to re-record it and he's like oh heck yeah I do and uh, and so we did and it became a hit all over again which is a rare thing in this world so um, if you have a dream dream as big as you possibly can and work as hard as you possibly can and if you know the words of this thing feel free to sing along that's what we do here in Texas so I can hear the wind whisper my name Telling me it's time to head out again My horses are chattered and the lights shut down I'm long over heading out of town Got a fever that they call the rodeo Just another one as I make the next show Times you make eight, times you hit dirt Go on, put another number to the back of my shirt And I'll ride Just like Texas in 18. 
I'm from Phoenix and Tulsa to the Astrodome From New York City down to San Antonio There's boys who are riding for living their pain And our money's all gone but we'll ride just the same Our hearts are getting broken and our heads are getting busted We'll always believe in the things that we trusted There'll be those nights when glory comes round We'll tip our hats and wave to the crowd And then ride that pony fast Like a cowboy from the past Be young and wild and free Like Texas Just like Texas in 1880 Zombie when you're older Someone will see that buckle hanging there on your belt And ask you how it felt Just like Texas in 1880 Just like Texas in 1880 Just like Texas Take me on to Texas Have y'all had a good time tonight? Yeah. Radney, we, we've, uh, we, we've got time for a couple more. And uh, I, I want to ask you, uh, I'm going to ask you uh, about one. And then uh, you, you, you pick the last one since you, you came the farthest to be here with us this evening. Uh, and, you know, there's the songs that other people have recorded of yours, and then uh, there are the songs that uh, I know that someone will pick up and make mega hits someday. And one of the songs that I want to ask you about, kind of as we're finishing things up, uh, is a song that I, I relate to in the first time I heard it. Uh, it touched me because I think one of the things that we struggle with and one of the things that songwriting is good for is to help people not feel alone. I think that's one of the reasons that I have pursued music so much, both as a fan and as a songwriter, is for those moments of connection where you feel like you're not alone. And you've written a song called Half of My Mistakes that, that to me is just one of those universal songs because I, I think we all... We all in our own way deal with regret. We all in our own way deal with uh, those things in life that, that were maybe we wish we would have made a different choice. And this is one of those songs that just uh, gives me hope that there's something good on the other side of those. You know, it goes back to that old, uh, uh, you know, Bible verse that all things work for the good, <laughs> you know. Amen. And to me, this song is uh, kind of the embodiment of that. So tell us about that one and play it for us. So I was writing with a guy who has a band in South Carolina called the Blue Dogs, and uh, his dad, he told me his dad used to quote Disraeli. And, uh, We'd, we'd written one song together, and we were supposed to write the next day. And, and uh, his, his dad used to quote Disraeli, and he told me, he said, so I want you to mull around on the idea tonight. I just want to tell you, you know, what the eyes and he said, Disraeli, I said, the 19th century, you know, English uh, 
politician? He goes, yeah. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and, uh, and, and he said, Israeli used to always say that half of his mistakes were because he was impetuous and the other half were because he was reticent. And I said, I get it, but impetuous and reticent are kind of $3 words for a country song, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but I said, but I, I, but I, I get what, you know, it's the, the yin and the yang of it, you know, it's, the, it's uh, walk, how we walk through life, you know. And uh, so it kind of bugged me and I, I asked my wife, I said, hey, babe, I'm going to go down in the basement and kind of mess around with this idea. And I got a long way down the road and I thought, I better stop because if he doesn't like where I'm going with this thing, you know, we'll just start all over again the next day. But he loved what it was doing. And, finished it the next day and uh, it became a, a you know kind of a, a Americana AAA hit for them and then I re-recorded it and it became a hit for me here at home in Texas and uh, I think one of the reasons that people look, like you say that they relate to it so much is because we've all made mistakes in life and you get to a certain age and you go oh I'm supposed to learn from those so Mistakes I made, stone cold sober. Half of my mistakes I made at closing time. Half the time I never saw it coming till it was over. Oh, half of my mistakes I made, love on the line. Half of my mistakes, I swear I should have known better Half of my mistakes were just amongst friends Half the time I never saw it come till it was over Oh, half of my mistakes I'd probably make them again And if I had it all to do over I'm sure I'd win and lose just as much I'd spend less time on right and wrong And a lot more time on love Half of my mistakes I made Cause I was moving too quickly Half of them were made Cause my heart was moving too slow Nobody can tell you a damn thing If you ain't listening Oh, half of my mistakes I made Cause I couldn't let go Let it go I'd give anything to change how it ended Half of my mistakes God, I wouldn't change a thing You can lean too hard on regret But I don't recommend it Cause half the good things in my life Came from half my mistakes yeah, a lot of good things in my life came from half my mistakes.
Thank you. Yeah. Have y'all enjoyed the show tonight? All right, here's what we're going to do. At the end of this show, uh, Radney Foster, by way of his beautiful wife, Cindy, will be right over here uh, at the merch table. And uh, somebody was telling me, I saw a little thing online that said, if, if you buy a T-shirt from a musician, they make the same net profit as if you listen to their song on Spotify 4,000 times. So unless you can listen to Radney's song 4,000 times on the drive home tonight, then stop by and buy a t-shirt over here at the merch booth. Or a book. Or a book, yeah, or a book. Yeah. You want to do something? I, 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 I want to do this one. Okay. But I did. My last project was a book of short stories and an uh, album of 10 songs to go with it. And uh, they... <laughs> Take, take, and it's wonderful. I'm, I'm working on a second book right now. So. It's wonderful. Well, Radney, I, I want to tell you on behalf of, uh, well, on behalf of everybody here tonight, on behalf of me and, and my wife and our crew here at Real Life Run Music, um, one more time, congratulations for your induction into the Texas Songwriters Hall of Fame. And... Thanks for, thanks for coming back to just share your heart with us tonight. We, we, we appreciate you. I hope you'll keep coming back. And uh, you finish us off however you see fit. Um, I wrote this song about my oldest boy. Um, for my oldest boy, really, not about him. Well, and it's also about him. When he was five years old, he was moving to France with his mom. And up until then, I'd had joint custody, and uh, we were de devastated. And, uh, and so I put it on a cassette like, you know, five or six times in a row, and he had one of those Fisher-Price big button things, and he could put it in there and, and, and listen to it as he went to sleep just so that he would know that, you know, I loved him from 5,000 miles away, 4,000 miles away. And uh, I don't think I saw coming you know, the impact that this song was gonna have. I thought it was just for my son, you know. It's just gonna have an impact between me and him. And I played it for my manager when he and his wife got pregnant, and this is a jaded music business manager, man, <laughs> who's seen it all come down. I mean, he had these huge tears just streaming down his face. He's like, my God, why didn't you play that song for me? It's, it's, it's a little kid song. So, no, man, it's like one of the most important songs you've written. I'm like, really? Because, yeah, and so, um, I put it on a record, and uh, Emilia Harris came and sang on it, and it was a real joy to have that happen. And then uh, three girls from Texas, the chicks, came along, and they, they recorded it. And I did not see the impact of how many millions and millions of people would hear this. You know, I've, I've had, had a soldier come up to me with his hair cut high and tight, and uh, his wife and his two kids, and he said, Mr. Foster, I need to thank you for that song. And I said, why? And he said, because I sang it to my kids over a satellite phone from Afghanistan. I can't tell you the number of, of, of the, the more than, I lose count. And, and sometimes my wife hides them from me, so I don't have to see them. But, you know, the letters that we receive wanting to know what kind of uh, permission is necessary to put part of the lyric on a child's gravestone. And if that won't humble you, nothing will. But I think it's because all I really wanted to do was express to my child that God really does hear amen wherever we are. Dragon tails and the water is white Pirates sail and lost boys fly 
despite moonbeams every night and I love you God speed little man sweet dreams little man oh my love will fly Rocket racers all took her out. Superman's in pajamas on the couch. Good night, moon, we'll find the mouse. And I love you. Godspeed, little man. Sweet dreams, little man. Oh, my love will fly to you each night on angels' wings. Godspeed, sweet dreams. God bless mommy in matchbox cars God bless dad and thanks for the stars God hears amen wherever we are And I love you God speed little man Sweet dreams little man Oh my love Fly to you each night on angels' wings. Godspeed. Godspeed. dreams. Dulces sueños. Thank you all so much. Carl, thanks so much for having me. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Radney Foster.